After a brief pause in activity in Q2, the trend towards lower vacancies and increasing lease rates resumed. In fact, the overall Greater Toronto Area market recorded its 14th consecutive quarterly increase in average net asking rates for industrial property, about a 9% increase year over year. Generally, the smaller the space, the more expensive the price per square foot. Season's greetings, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of CRE Next Work Out Loud. Thanks for spending some time with me today. My name is Mel Giannone. Here we are in the last few weeks of the fourth quarter, about to turn the page on 2020. And it's been much of the same thing this quarter as in the last. But today, we're going to take a look back to understand how and why we got here, so as to predict where we're going in the new year. This week in CRE, I want to share with you some insights on the current GTA industrial market. One, from a tenant occupier's perspective, we'll tell you what companies are doing to navigate their way through this fourth quarter. And two, from an owner investor's perspective, we'll reveal the latest market statistics across the greater Toronto area to help guide you with your portfolio. Let's begin with the big picture. The ongoing COVID saga continues to influence the need for some types of commercial real estate while suppressing demand for other types. In short, bricks and mortar retail and office space have been perceived as non-essential, while an increased importance has been placed on industrial properties. Industrial sales and leasing accounted for the greatest amount of transaction activity in Toronto commercial real estate for Q3 2020. To explain why, we need to revisit the macroeconomic conditions over that three month period. Canada's third quarter GDP grew by 8.9%, partly as a result of the reopening of the economy in the summer months of July, August and September. Final domestic demand rose 10.8%. Favorably low mortgage rates and continued government support for households and businesses helped ease consumer affordability and in many cases propped up purchasing power. In part, these factors contributed to a third quarter jump in household demand for durable goods by 38%, the steepest quarter over quarter rise on record. Canada's industrial product price index experienced a rise in costs for lumber and other wood products, primary non-ferrous metal products such as unwrought aluminum and copper, machinery and equipment products, electrical, electronic, audiovisual, and telecommunications products, as well as furniture and fixtures. The residential housing market was on fire, recording one of the greatest 90-day sales periods in history. What would follow is a demand for home furnishings and equipment and household debt to disposable income levels rising by almost 5% to 170.7. In many cases, the extra government cash coupled with a break from mortgage payments, rent payments, tax deferrals, and in the improved job market conditions allowed for a surge in home improvement projects and capital investments into business operations. Due to most people staying close to home this summer, household savings rates remained higher than 2019 levels. Many people traded summer vacations for gardening, landscaping, and hobbies. Still looming in the background was the residual fear from the spread of COVID-19, which may have contributed to more demand for vehicle sales, food and beverage sales and groceries, ongoing restrictions in the retail sector, and the adoption of work from home schedules meant growth in e-commerce would continue to accelerate about three years ahead of schedule. So the cumulative effect of all these macroeconomic factors in the third quarter augmented the demand for industrial assets by these sectors, manufacturing and production, food and beverage, transportation and logistics, 
warehousing and fulfillment sectors, and data centers, to name a few. After a brief pause in activity in Q2, the trend towards lower vacancies and increasing lease rates resumed. In fact, the overall Greater Toronto Area market recorded its 14th consecutive quarterly increase in average net asking rates for industrial property, about a 9% increase year over year. Generally, the smaller the space, the more expensive the price per square foot. In Q3, overall availability rates hovered under 2% across the GTA, making Toronto one of the tightest markets in North America. With shortages in supply of mid to large base spaces, those are blocks of space greater than 50,000 square feet and 200,000 square feet, respectively. This is an important statistic for Toronto. That would mean more than 98% of all industrial property is spoken for in one form or another. It also has implications for Canada with a market size of over 800 million square feet, the GTA accounts for almost half, 45% of Canadian inventory and represents about 66% of all new industrial space under construction across Canada. To place into perspective, the GTA inventory for industrial space has expanded about 1% in 2020, that's over 7 million square feet, yet over 85% of that growth had already been absorbed by Q3, that's as much space as was built for all of 2019. Even with the pandemic, we still have an industrial supply shortage across Canada going forward into 2021. A healthy industrial market with plenty of product to choose from should have availability rates closer to 4 or 5%. So there's still lots of room to grow. Here are how the numbers played out statistically heading into the last quarter of 2020. The GTA North Suburban Market is most expensive with rental rates averaging $11.15 per square foot and sales per square foot as high as $320. It is also the market that achieved the most net absorption of space in Q3, an increase of over 50% quarter over quarter. The GTA East Suburban Market is the least expensive with rental rates averaging $7.75 per square foot and sales per square foot ranging between $135 and $155. The GTA West Suburban Market contributed over 60% of the overall leasing activity in Q3. The West holds the most inventory of buildings and currently makes up over 50% of all new construction, both speculative and built to suit developments. Most of the construction activity exists in the western and northwestern parts of the GTA. The top four submarkets with the largest amount of construction are Mississauga, Brampton, Caledon, and Vaughan. Mississauga and Brampton have the most available inventory and the highest percentage of pre-leasing, over 60% and 75% respectively. Caledon ranks first in delivery of space within the next 12 months, while Vaughan sits at the top for most developments currently under construction. So here is our guidance for tenants. Plan ahead, I mean well ahead. If you're a small tenant under 20,000 square feet, you can expect to pay at the higher end of the rental scale by a dollar or two more per square foot. You'll also need to start your search for space up to six months in advance of your targeted occupancy because there are less than 550 available options to choose from across the entire GTA and a lot of competition. If you're seeking to renew your current lease, expect sticker shock. Your landlord could adjust your rental rates upward by as much as 20%. Remember, the average market rent has increased by 9% year to date. Many of the smaller tenants out there are seeking out shorter lease terms of less than five years. There are two reasons for that. One, tenant occupiers in this size range tend to be small businesses hit hardest by the lockdowns without revenue visibility for the long run, making it a difficult choice to commit beyond three years. Two, while other tenants are seeking temporary space to catch up and fulfill online orders or stockpile more supplies and warehouse just in case inventory. Again, 
ideally for less than three years. If you're a larger tenant, the problem you'll face is scarcity. Unlike the available inventory for space under 250,000 square feet, requirements for greater than 250K have just over 10 options to choose from at this time. A tenant of this size requirement would be wise to evaluate their real estate strategy up to two years in advance. It will take up to a full year to construct a new building after the site has been chosen and environmental feasibility has been determined. Furthermore, delays caused by the pandemic could slow things down in the planning, permit, material delivery, and construction phases. So here is our guidance for investors. Looking at the fourth quarter and ahead into the new year, we can expect much of the same to continue for the industrial asset class. Lower vacancy, moderate rental rate growth, and increasing sales per square foot as demand grows and supply struggles to catch up. The government mandated lockdowns coupled with the digital disruption to the retail and office asset classes has forced a shift towards the adoption of industrial buildings to work around the restrictions. No longer are there four distinct food groups in commercial real estate, office, retail, industrial, and multifamily. Instead, we see a blurring of some of these groups, specifically a transformation of bricks and mortar retail into industrial dark stores and ghost kitchens, and a merger of office space within flexible industrial buildings that can easily adjust the proportion between administrative and warehousing needs. Going forward, freestanding buildings with serviced expansion lands next to our major arterial roads will command a premium from tenants for a few reasons. One, they demand more autonomous control over a company's safe and secure working environment. They want to remain in compliance with restrictions and avoid shutdowns. Two, they need to build in future on-site growth for their operations with minimal disruption. Three, they will demand a higher percentage of paved lot areas, not only for traditional parking, but for supply chain management that could encompass on-site drone ports, staging for last mile delivery van vehicles, accommodating overnight truck and trailer parking, and widening courts to easily maneuver shipping and receiving a 53-foot containers. Four, they will demand greater clear heights for higher racking and perhaps multiple floors to accommodate segregated fulfillment based on robotic collection. With the accelerated growth of e-commerce continuing in 2021, opportunities to invest in logistics, warehouse, and fulfillment centers will be the best choice for owners and the easiest to build or convert. Other types of industrial assets growing in demand will be for data centers, cold storage, and self-storage facilities. With all that being said, where should you plan to invest? The Government of Ontario has plans for a new 400 series highway known as the GTA West Multimodal transportation corridor, say that fast a couple of times. It will span approximately 50 kilometers across Halton, Peel, and York regions, incorporating about 16 interchanges. The plan is to connect Highway 400 to Highway 403, while linking through Highway 427, 410, 407, and Highway 401. That's the long-term play if you're an investor. With vast tracts of undeveloped land along the proposed corridor, any location next to a future four-way interchange would pay off huge a decade from now. The short-term alternative would be to seek out small to mid-bay sized opportunities between 20 and 50,000 square feet. There were about 570 industrial sales transactions over the last 12 months, averaging close to 30,000 square feet. That would indicate where the size demand is. The sales price was just shy of 10% of the asking price, with about 90% leased at the time of sale, generally delivering a 4.5% cap rate. This type of building would be ideally suited to capitalize on the trend for last mile delivery into populated metro areas, 
This could mean locations adjacent to Toronto, Guelph, Kitchener-Waterloo, Hamilton, Barrier, or Oshawa. And lastly, another option could be to consider the conversion of non-performing shopping centers into last mile fulfillment centers for retailers who continue to modernize their distribution networks and build out e-commerce platforms. Well, that's all for this week. Hopefully you found some entertainment value in the data presented here, along with the insight into current market conditions, trends, and knowing what the future might look like. My goal is to help you save or make a lot of money through these episodes of CRE Next Work Out Loud. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and tap that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content as soon as it's released. Thanks for your time. For real estate opportunities together, I can be reached by telephone at 905-567-5602 or by email delivery to mel at paramountrealestate.ca or communicating through the comments section if you're watching by video or listening via podcast. Until next time, stay well and have a very Merry Christmas.